Welcome to Towards a Speaker Authorization System for the Chime 2020 Dinner Party Transcription. My name is Christoph Bödecker and I'm presenting this joint work from Paderborn University in Toshiba. This presentation is for the Chime workshop. Let me start with an overview of this presentation. I will start with the guided source separation system. It was designed for the Chime 5 challenge and is now part of the baseline in track 1 of the Chime 6 challenge. Here I will present how we move this system from track 1 to track 2. I will exp after that I will explain the acoustic models that we used before I present the results on the second track. Finally I will give an overview of our ongoing work, a neural speaker diarization rotation system and spatial features that we obtained from a spatial mixture model. Here I will only explain a few things about the time Chime 6 dataset. For a complete description, see the overview presentation or the corresponding publication. Let me now start to explain the difference between track 1 and track 2. In Chime 6 we have 24 channels and we have the human annotations when an utterance starts and when an utterance ends. So for example in this segment the green speaker said you thought I spent 45 bucks on these. Hmm? Hmm. We know that the red and the blue crosstalker is active and the orange crosstalker is inactive. For the estimation of the transcription we are allowed to use all these information, except obviously the transcription. In track 2 we are not allowed to use the start and end times of the utterances, so the only information that we have there is that we have at most 4 speakers active. Track 2 has a baseline system to estimate the diarization so when we use the diarization rotation system, we obtain a candidate replacement for the human annotations. Let me now explain the spatial mixture model. A spatial mixture model takes a mixture of multiple speakers as input. This is recorded with multiple microphones and transformed to the short time for year transform domain. The spatial mixture model then estimates the time frequency mask for all the speakers and the noise. This is usually done in an unsupervised manner, on a single utterance. The parameters on the single utterance are estimated with an EM algorithm. In the E step of the EM algorithm, we estimate who is active at a particular time frequency pin. In the M step, we calculate the speaker directions. And these two steps are alternatively executed. Since they are alternatively executed, we need an initialization. You, commonly uh, the initialization is done for the source activity. This initialization can be done unsupervised or it can also be done with a guided system. Now let me explain the guided source separation system. Here we see again the audio data and the human annotations. In Chime 6 the number of channels was reduced to 12. When we are interested in an enhanced signal for this utterance, we take a 10 second left context and we take a 10 second right context. The waveform is then forwarded to the short time Fourier transform domain and the signal is derubberated with the WPE algorithm. The spatial mixture model takes this as input and estimates the mask for the interested speaker. This mask is then used in a mask based beam format to obtain an enhanced signal. This signal is then forwarded to the ASR system to estimate the transcription. The human annotations are used as the initialization for the spatial mixture model and it is used inside the spatial mixture model to constrain the mask estimation. But the important point is here the initialization. This is now the guided source separation that is used in track 1. In track 2 we are not allowed to use these human annotations, so we replace them with the diarization rotation output. But simply replacing it with the diarization rotation output is not enough, because the utterance boundaries we need also be to be moved. So for example we can move it to the left to this green segment again. And now we have the system that can be applied to track 2. Now let me explain some of the implementation details. The replacement of the human annotations was already implemented because it was used in an as refinement for the human annotations. 
but the replacement of the utterance boundaries was missing. And if somebody forget to replace the utterance boundaries, the word arrays in may increase or decrease. But at least the system is not a valid system for track 2. After the workshop, we will publish the code to support RTTM files as replacement for the guide and for the utterance. Now let me explain the acoustic models that we used. We trained six different acoustic models. The first acoustic model is the baseline acoustic models. Then the, we varied the training data and the neural network architecture. For training data, we used WPE preprocessed data or guided source separation preprocessed data. For the neural network architecture, we used classical CNN layers or 40 ResNet CNN layers. Some of the acoustic models we also trained with a discriminative training objective. Now here are the word error rates. The first line is a baseline word error rate. So the baseline acoustic model with the baseline enhancement on the test data. We obtained here 76% in the word error rate on the eval data set. When we now replace the baseline enhancement for the testing time, with guided source operation, we got an improvement of around 3% on the eval data set. The best acoustic model that we trained got a further improvement of around 3% on the eval data set. When we now do a system combination on all these six acoustic models, we end up with 68.96 in the word error rate. This is our submitted word error rate for track 2. These acoustic models are uh, the same as the one that I used in Toshiba speech recognition system for the CHIME 2020 challenge. But here we use them for the second track. Now I want to present some of our ongoing work. We trained a neural speaker authorization system on the CHIME 6 data. A neural speaker authorization system takes the observation as input to a neural network and this neural network then estimates the probability that a source is active at a particular frame. To train the system, this output is forwarded to a permutation invariant objective. This is then used to optimize the parameters of the neural network. At test time, we don't need the probabilities, we need the on and offsets for the utterances. To obtain them, we used a simple Viterbi decoding on an HMM as it was used in the SID CHIME 6 baseline system. We also experimented with an unsupervised spatial mixture model on the CHIME 6 data. So here we have an example spectrogram for a 40 second long utterance. So here are multiple times a speaker starting to say something and stopping. Here we see the human annotations when the speaker starts and stops. The spatial mixture model is unsupervised, so we don't use the guide here. The spatial mixture model is applied to the observation and estimates the mask for each speaker. This mask is then multiplied with this observation and we obtain these four spectrograms. The first spectrogram here we see it's a quite good estimate because when the human annotated there should be something active, the spatial mixture model estimated relative good the activity of this particular speaker. But for the fourth speaker, for example, the estimation is quite bad because here the recognition is not really good and where it should be silence, there's definitely some activity marked from the spatial mixture model. So directly using this for a diarization rotation system may be difficult. Instead, we decided to use these spectrograms as features for the neural speaker diarization rotation system. Since the dimensionality of these features is quite high, we decided to reduce the dimensionality of these features. As dimension reduction, we took the average across all frequencies. So we end up with a scalar for each speaker for each frame. We stacked these four scalars to the observation input to the neural speaker authorization system. So the input size increased by four. Now here are the simulation results for our neural speaker authorization system. In the first line, we have the baseline system where we used guided source separation as enhancement. 
In the last line, we have the target word error rate. So here we used for the diarization, the human annotations. This is also the track one baseline system. The second line is now our neural speaker diarization system without spatial features. On the eval dataset, we have relative similar word error rates. And on the dev dataset, we got an improvement of around 5%. We also calculated the diarization error rate on the training and dev and eval data set. The diarization error rate on the training data indicates a relative good number of 34%. On the dev and eval data set, we had on average 60% in the diarization error rate. So here we already see an overfitting effect to the training data. We then added some spatial features. Uh, to the neural speaker diarizationization system and got a huge improvement in the training data, diarization error rate. So we have here a diarization error rate of 2.5. This is close to perfect. We got only a small improvement on the word error rate on EVA, so around 2% and also on the dev data set. The diarization error rate also on the dev and eval data set improved. But the difference between the diarization error rate is still quite high. So we applied some techniques to reduce the overfitting effect. We added dropout, reduced the number of mail frequency bins and reduced the number of BLSDM layers. All of these techniques helped to reduce the overfitting effect, but we still have here a very high overfitting effect. The word error rate through these techniques increased by 6% on the eval data set. So we got a good improvement, but the gap to the track one baseline is still high. Why didn't we submit this system to the challenge? We didn't submit it because the neural speaker diarization system is applied to 40 second segments. And the permutation problem between the segments we solved with an Oracle permutation solver. So this is not a valid system for track two. Why didn't we address this? Because we were focusing to reduce the overfitting effect first. One cause of this overfitting may be that we have only 32 speakers in the training data set. For comparison, the X-Vector baseline system in Chime 6 was trained on more than 7,000 speakers from the Vox C-Lab data set. Now let me summarize this presentation. We show that the guided source separation system can also be applied on track two, where we replace the human annotations with the diarization output. These are the word arrays that we submitted for track two. Our system can be explained with a baseline diarization system plus guided source separation plus six acoustic models. For category A, we use the baseline language model, and for category B, we use an RNN language model and got a further improvement of 0.5% in the word error rate. We did some experiments with the neural speaker authorization system that was trained on the Chime 6 data. We proposed to use spatial features from a spatial mixture model, and we observed a huge overfitting problem when we train the neural speaker diarization rhythm system on the Chime 6 data. A point for the future is to solve the segment permutation problem. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions, feel free to write me an email.